Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna be casting a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the beautiful map Anorian. The patch is 1.06, let's get it started. Alright, at the bottom right side of the map we have the yellow model player Karuskas. His ally at the top right side is the grey Rohan player Fishy. Their opponent at the top left side is the blue Gonzo player the Kraken. And his ally at the bottom left side is the purple model player Skin. It's a, it's a interesting matchup, I mean... What I'm trying to say is, when you are playing a 2v2 on the map Anorian and both the sides are including one Mordor and one good faction, in this case Rohan or Gonzo, the matchup is gonna be ending who is gonna get the middle first from the Mordor players. Because Mordor, as you can see, is gonna always grab three settlements, three lumber mills, of the Mordor players actually, and that's the reason why they are also skipping the Golem, because you can't afford the third lumber mill if you go for the Golem. You're gonna, your start is gonna be always some Orc Pits with the Mordor faction. And your goal early on will be to keep those Lumber Mills alive while pressuring the opponent's Lumber Mills. And I think in this situation, Rohan is gonna be stronger because he will be able to get a lot of extra peasants on the field. Gondor player is gonna be stronger with the first push though because soldiers, they have much more durability than the Rohan peasants. And one of the soldiers has been taken down. Karuskas was doing a great job. The one orc has been sent forward from the player's skin, the purple model player at the bottom left side. Eye of Sauron is gonna be available, the Gondor player is starting with the heal and they have both eye. In those kind of situations what you can do is also to start with the Elven Wood. Especially if this model player is going for the eye, your Elven Wood is gonna nullify the leadership and it's gonna increase your armor by 40% as long as you stay on top of that. On the other side, the um, Gondor player Kraken was doing a great job with his Hobbit defending against those peasants. Fishy is not paying attention, he's gonna get this farm down though at the top left side. And that's gonna hurt the Gondor player big time. The reason for that is uh, because he has only one farm outside. And the stable from the Gondor faction costs more than the stable from the Rohan faction. And also the Gondor knights they are more expensive than the Rohirrim. And I think uh, the Moro player will be able to defend this one with the help of the Hobbit from Fishy. And this farm is gonna be taken down. I don't like the positioning here, what I'm trying to say is in those kind of situations, nice one here by the way from the Gondor player, demolishing the farm in time, the reason for that is if you don't do that, one of the peasants is gonna hit level 2. And level 2 is a huge power spike in BFME 1 guys. Okay, nice space here from the purple motor player, because he was keeping all his mills alive for so far, unlike the yellow motor player, who has way less in his space, but he will be able now to recapture this lumber mill which is gonna be helping him out quite a lot. And he was also able to creep the work layer, uh, which is gonna give him money. And that's gonna be important, like mentioned at the beginning of the game, you will be trying to capture this middle camp as soon as possible. That's gonna be a huge power spike, and in this matchup the model players are not gonna go for trolls, they're gonna potentially go for a Nazgul or even the Witch King, just to support the ally. Because if one of the model players go for the trolls and the other one is getting a Nazgul on the field, the trolls are gonna be absolutely useless against the Nazguls, you know? With the Nazgul's you can just easily take them down and help your ally, you know, by killing the trolls and rushing the base. The farm has been captured now by Fishy. He has now two farms outside of his base. The first Rohirrim is joining the battlefields now. The first Gondonite is gonna follow up very, very soon. But you can see yourself, the Gondonites, they cost now 720 each. In the Rohirrim, they cost only 450 each. And also less command points. 15 command points for the Rohirrim and 20 command points for the Gondonites. Okay, they're gonna fight already for the middle camp. Full base here for um, Karuskas, but also full base here for the purple motor player Sin. One power point collected, he can now go for the Tainted Land. The Kraken, the Gondor player, has heal almost back up. Karuskas has the land, will be used, and uh, the other motor player has also land, he can just cover this land now, which is a mis mistake from Karuskas because you can expect now that your opponent's motor player will have also land. This is gonna give a huge advantage now for the Gondor motor team. And I think with that being said, they should be able to capture this middle. I think it's not bad, because look his money guys, he will not only be able to buy the base, but also he will be having enough money to fill the base instantly. And once you have industry available, you can use the industry on every single furnace in the middle camp. That's gonna increase your resource income big time. Which is gonna use his Rohirrim to kill finally those lumber mills, remember, they are untouched from the beginning of the game. The middle camp is now gonna be captured by the purple motor player. The other model player though, Karuskas, has almost the money he needs for the Nazgul. 
So once he has a Nazgul on the field, those Gondor Knights, they won't be able to touch those Lumber Mills anymore. But on the other side, the purple model player will have just much better economy. Okay, the Rohirrim here, they were able to take down two of the Lumber Mills. The Gondor Knights, they are going for a base rush, which is smart, but now he has finally some towers up on the field. That's always something you can check, you know, sometimes your opponents are gonna be kinda kind of lazy to build some towers and the slaughterhouses from the Moro faction are very vulnerable early on. They have only 1500 health, so taking them down unlike the furnaces is way way easier. Okay, the Rohan player has actually demolished the stable guys. I don't know why, Karuskas has now the money he needs for the Nazgul. You can go for the Nazgul and in the worst case you can also cancel him in the last possible seconds if you have enough money for the Witch King instead. Okay, the Warg Creep is actually still remaining on the field. Eye of Sauron is being used now from the Mordor player Karuskas. Uh, let's see who's gonna be able to get the Creep here. But there are many more Gondor Knights on the field than the Rohirrim. I think the Rohirrim, they were not able to Creep this one. They would hit level 3 at least. The Gondor player was able to capture this Creep. He has now also full base. Just like the Rohan player. I think he's going for either Aragorn or Legolas. I don't know what he's going for. I can't tell you guys. The Lumber Mills here are actually under control from the purple model player for some reason. He's actually going for a troll cage, which is fine because you can afford both trolls and Nazgûls if you have this middle camp under your control. And also he has right now four Lumber Mills under his control for whatever reason. <laughs> and he has he was able to build those furnaces and towers very cheap. Because remember in Battle for Middle Earth 1, the Lumber Mills are gonna give you a boot bonus. Which means uh, reduce costs for the buildings. And you have four mills like he does. You will be able to you know build your buildings by 30 for 30% 30 cheaper. Which is a lot. One of the Gondor Knights from the Gondor player level 4 is gonna be unfortunately taken down. Nice one here from the Moro player Karuskas. And again, with the help of the Nazgul, he should be easily able to keep his Lamry mills alive. However, you need to keep in mind that Nazgul is very vulnerable against Faramir. And in order to take him down, you can always go for Faramir and that's gonna be also the case. Faramir's Wanding Arrow is dealing significant amount of damage to the Nazgûls, unlike to the Witch King. Witch King is much more resistant against anything but Eowyn and Gandalf. Okay, the creep at the top side of the map is gonna be taken down by the Rohan player. The Gondor player has to be extremely careful, but also the Nazgûl has to be extremely careful. There are just too many towers in the middle of the map. And during all this time, the Lumber Mills here are still quite untouched. So this model player at the bottom left side has an insane amount of resource income. He is asking his ally, the Gondor player, the Kraken, to creep this troll layer at the bottom side. The Gondor player is not gonna go for upgrades in this situation because upgrades on this Gondor Knights are not gonna do much for you. Instead, you wanna skip the upgrades and try to get your Gandalf the White on the field. And that's why you need the power points for that. He is like half a power point away still. And Smooth is coming up. Okay, that's interesting. That's what he was saving for. He's now gonna rebuild the stable. But Ant Smooth is kinda risky because now he will have a Nazgul on the field and the Ants, they're not gonna do anything. I mean, like, this model player has obviously the money he needs, right? He has like full base in the middle, full base at the bottom left side. He has untouched Lumber Mills for the majority of the time. And now he has even industry on it. Look at this. Five furnaces with 100% more resource income. Which means like they're gonna act like 10 furnaces now and the model player will have a crazy amount of resource income. Entmood is up on the field, but the Nazgul is gonna be joining the battlefield very very soon. I think in this kind of situations the Rohan player should not go for a stable anymore. But it looks like he has only one Rohirrim on the field, that's definitely not enough. You wanna have at least at bare minimum two, ideally you wanna have three Rohirrim on the field. The trolls they can fight against the ants with, with no leadership. But Farami is also dealing a lot of damage to this ends, guys. Look at this. One end is already down. The Nazgul is now on the field. Uh, yeah, now with the help of the Nazgul, this ends, they're gonna be, you know, slowly but surely taken down. One part of the wall has been taken down. Fishy was just using heal to keep those ends healthy. Two parts of the wall has been taken down. And during all this time, like mentioned several times before, the model player is untouched. Untouched. He has a crazy amount of resource income. Also, Karuskas was able to use industry on three slaughterhouses. He is aiming to get Witch King on the field next. This Rohan player is gonna definitely need some upgrades, but also archers on the field and Eowyn to counter this Nazgul. At the end, they were able to actually break three parts of the wall from the Gondor player, the Kraken. 
and he won't be able to repair this any soon because he has no farms outside right now. And ideally you don't want to waste your money into repairing this, you want to actually get your Gandalf on the field as soon as possible. This model play can also go for com combos by the way and that's gonna be also the case. Because right now they will need some counter units to deal with the Nazgul of the yellow model player. But also with the Witch King later. And Faramir all alone is not gonna be able to do that. But like mentioned several times, this model player has great amount of resource income. So he can, he can afford to go for combos, he can afford to go for the Drama Troll and for the Witch King at the same time. Indeed now he has the second Nazgul up on the field. And that's gonna make the Rohirrim from the Grey Rohan player Fishy almost useless. One part of the wall has been taken down with the help of the troll, but the troll is gonna be taken down next. So both the bases from the Gonzo player but also from Rohan player are open now for a potential attack. Armory is up, he has only one farm outside so the resource income from the good factions, in this case Gonzo but also Rohan, is not looking very great. He's not gonna go for the Forge Blades which makes sense because you don't need it in this matchup, you wanna need... You're gonna need a Banakaria upgrade to deal with the Nazgûls because otherwise this creature ability is gonna mess you up big time. And look at this guys, like he has 3 Rohirrim in his ally space doing absolutely nothing because he can't do nothing with this Rohirrim now. The second he sends them out, they will be just taken down in a second. Karuskas is gonna actually not go for trolls or anything like this, he's gonna go for the third Nazgûl. He was also able to purchase the Fire Ore upgrade and the Banakaria upgrade. But without the Drama Troll, I don't think those combos are going to be strong enough. I mean, on the other side, Rohan player can always go for Theorin to support the combos from his ally, but also Aragorn is going to be a great spot with the leadership. Paramir is shooting down one of the Witch Kings. Heavy armor purchase on this Rohirrim. Paramir is going to be able to get mounted. He should be easily able to get away. They have leadership now, 50% more damage and armor, but they still can't deal with two Nazgûls at once. The Witch King is going to be following up very, very soon. The first Drama Troll is also on the, on the way. Okay, so this ally, this combos, they will have Drama, drama Troll spot, which is the best spot, by the way, for the allied combos. Because it gives you insane amount of stats. Like 50% more damage, 50% more armor, but also 200% more combat experience. Eowyn is on the field now from the Rohan player. Eowyn is one of the best and the cheapest counters to the Nazgûl slash Witch King. Paramir was using the warning arrow. Eowyn is gonna use now the... Yeah, look at the damage she was, she was able to deal. Almost was able to one-shot the Fell Beast. Uh, the Fell Beast is gonna be taken down though, potentially. There is nothing that can actually hurt them, because he has not purchased the Benakiri upgrade just yet on these Orc Archers. And also kinda risky move. To not go for the combos, but also not only Orc Archers. He's gonna combine them now. The reason for that is... They are very vulnerable, and you can't purchase heavy armor on the orc units. That's not possible. That's why you need the combined units with the orcs in the front side, so you have more resistance against the potential trample damage from the Rohan players who hit him. There's also a statue on the backside for some potential base rush. The statue is gonna increase your damage by 100%, by the way, and also gonna grant you 100% combat experience. The yellow motor player has now. Uh, uh, Siege works coming up after making some combos. He has three combos under his control with the leadership of Witch King. And he might also need the help of Theodin. Theodin is a great sportive hero, by the way. Gives you 50% damage and armor with level 1. And the white guy is on the field finally. Gandalf the White from the Gondor player, the Kraken. With the help of the Gandalf, uh, he should be able to deal with the Nazgûls. Because the combination of the Easter Light and you know with the with the warning arrow from Faramir is gonna be enough to burst down a normal Nazgul. It's not gonna be enough, however, to deal with the Witch King. But if you are gonna be able to hit the Witch King with the Easter Light and the Lightning Sword, you will be able to burst him down as well. I mean Gandalf is the best hero after after all. Eowyn is gonna get sniped, one shot it from Gandalf, one Easter Light is enough to burst her down from 100 to 0. The model player is camping. We have some catapults now, they're gonna be nice against these combos. But remember, he has Drama Troll, Spot, and Farami is all about hit level 5. That's gonna also unlock his leadership, which means additional armor for the allied Nerby units. Witch King is gonna be the next hero. The industry was kinda missing, he was not able to hit these two furnaces, unfortunately. They're all about hit level 3 though, and level 3 is not gonna make them only 
Thank you. Oh, one of the Nazgûls from from Karuskas has been taken down. Yes, only the Witch King remaining on the field. Gandalf is going for the beautiful Wizard Blast, and he will be able to kill a lot of units. Heal has to be used though in order to for him to get away. It looks like the Moro player is going for the Rohan base, which makes sense. The Nazgûls are gonna be able to take down the Citadel first. The Rohan base is very vulnerable, vulnerable right now. He has nothing to defend himself. Going for a potential trample with the Tainted Lands. Gets a lot of experience with Theodin. Look his experience, guys. He's almost level 4. Level 4 is gonna unlock the Glorious Judge, and that's gonna be a massive power spike for the Rohan model team. And level 4 unlocked Glorious Judge is available. And he's not using it. Oh, what a beautiful Bizarre Blast. Almost all the Rohirrim are been taken down. He has to retreat now. Elven Elias is gonna be used for defensive purposes to deal with the trolls, but also with the Nazgûs. The Drama Troll is inside, but the purple model player, the skin, or yeah, skin, has lost every single combo battalion. And the Rohirrim are now very, very high leveled. He was able to save two of these battalions, guys. One of them is level six, one of them is level. Yeah, they are both level six, I think. Which is nice. Uh, but the Rohan player now has to invest a lot of money in order to rebuild the Citadel, the Well, the Stable. And remember, he was also not purchasing the Forged Blades from the Armory, guys. The Forged Blades would be nice in those kind of situations because you can burst and uh, everything down much, much faster. Uh, one combo is not enough. Uh, and remember, Eowyn has been taken down before. The Nazgul might still be taken down, though. The Orc Archers are dealing a lot of damage with the help of the Witch King. He was able to kill one of the Nazguls. He actually lost both the Nazgûls during the fight, and he was still not able to get his Witch King up on the field. Almost Darkness for Karuskas, which is gonna be a huge power spike. Darkness already available for his skin, he has to just pick it from the spellbook. He's gonna use it now, potentially not now, but he's gonna use it later. Darkness is gonna cover the entire map and will affect every allied unit on the field with extra armor and damage leadership. Katas from Karuskas, they need to be protected though. Gandalf is doing his thing, Lightning Sword is gonna be used and cancelled. The Katas, in those kind of situations, Karuskas has to make sure that his, com his combos are around his own catapults. Because otherwise they're gonna just get sniped down and they are very cost they are very expensive as well without any furnaces, they're gonna cost 800 each guys. You can also reduce the cost of the catapults by making uh, furnaces instead of slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouses are gonna, are gonna uh, you know, reduce the cost of your trolls and uh, the furnaces are gonna reduce the cost of upgrades and also your catapults okay alvin allies is gonna be used that i don't know about that and uh, more trolls are coming still no witch king on the field from the purple motor player he's actually just spamming more and more units and look at this these catapults are much much cheaper because of the four furnaces he has and they can become even cheaper once you have two more furnaces under your control okay uh, yeah, the Rohan Moro team, they need to camp now. They have no chance to leave the base. And I think time is gonna favor the Mordo Gondor team because the Gondor player now has three farms under his control untouched for a long time. They are all level three. He's going for the combos next. Uh, Rangers with the leadership, with the immense leadership Mordo can offer are gonna be one-shotting almost everything. But keep in mind that the combination of the Alvin Wood slash Tainted Land into the Glorious Charge Trample can still be devastating. Rohan player is going for the combos as well. Uh, this Mora player will definitely need some uh, drama trolls, but he has not even a troll cage up on the field. He's going for the last Nazgul now. We'll have all the Nazguls and the Witch King on the field. Easter Light is going to be used on one of the catapults. He's going to be able to one-shot that one. Um, this space is also protected with catapults and combos. So they need to make, now make a choice. I can still believe that... Okay, uh, Lightning Sword is going to be used. Elvin Wood is being used now. Glorious charge for a potential trample. Oh, that's gonna be devastating. Beautiful trample. Very delayed counter. Tainted lines here from the Moro player. The tainted line from Karuskas has been used as well, by the way. A lot of tainted lines. The last Elvin Wood is definitely from the Gondor player. But still, the trample was able to deal a lot of damage, and the fight will won will be well, I can't even talk. Will be won by the Rohan Moro player once again. The Nazgûls, they are doing work, the Drama Trolls are running it down, the Trolls, they can't do much, there are just too many Nazgûls to deal with. The Combos are doing a great job as well from Karuskas for defense, but they are being on the enemy Elven Wood, which means they won't have the leadership available right now. The Drama Troll is running it down, there is nothing he can do, Drama Troll is not about dealing damage, 
is much more about uh, spotting the allied units around him. Okay, the Witch King is finally on the field now from the purple model player skin. The Gondor player was able to save his Gandalf, who is now, by the way, almost rank 8. Level 10 is gonna be the time for this old white man to shine with the Word of Power. It's a risky move, by the way, to go inside like this. He has not purchased the Nightshield upgrade just yet. The Gondor Knights are gonna take a lot of damage. Gandalf might be in trouble, though. Does he have heal? That's the question. Uh, he was using heal already, so Gandalf is good to go. The Gondor Knights were also able to survive that one because Darkness and Gandalf gives you a lot of armor leadership. Darkness is still active, by the way. It's being active for 3 minutes always after you use it. A uh, fire upgrade purchase from the Rohan player Fishy as well. And Rohirrim, they are very, very strong now with the Glorious Charge. I mean, you could see yourself what they are able to do in those kind of situations because Orc combos, if they don't have the leadership they need, they're gonna just get one shot from the Rohirrim with the Glorious Charge. Nazgûls, they need to be extremely careful. There are too many combos. He is running it down. One of the Nazgûls has been bursted down already. The Witch King is going to be the next target. Look at the damage they are able to deal. Okay, the Gondor player has to be careful as well because only normal archers, they're not going to be strong enough. Glorious Charge is being used now. Catapults are going to be also joining the battlefield from the purple model player. I mean, Rohan has to fight for the map control, but that's easier said than done. Beautiful trample once again. I mean, the Rohirrim, they have also insane amount of leadership rights now, guys, with Witch King, Theodin, and the Glorious Charge combination with the Darkness. They are actually one-shotting almost everything. And even without the Forge Blades or the Nightshield upgrade, or, you know, which is called Horseman Shield for the Rohan player, they are still very, very tanky. They don't take too much damage, especially not when they have the Glorious Charge. Okay? Uh, forgot to mention that one, but if you don't know, the Drama Troll is also offering the only unit or the only leadership that offers leadership to the Siege Weapons is the Drama Troll. Which is not gonna only count on the Catapults from the Moral Faction, but it can also le give leadership to Ants or Balistas, even to Gondor Trebuchets. Okay, uh, I think what the Rohan player has to do is he has to repair this wall, which again is easier said than done. Because he has only one farm outside, which is not even level 3 just yet. He has four farms inside his base, archer range, statue on the backside, and the well for the sustain. So he has not a great amount of resource income. Unlike the Gondor player, who has now three level three farms outside of his base. The Nazgûls are fighting, and you can see, you know, Mordor is the carry faction in this one, because you have much more resources than your ally. Uh, and smart move here from this Mordor player to give actually his farms to the Gondor player. Because he has the middle camp under his control with 4 furnaces, level 3. And he has still one slaughterhouse. He was skipping the lumber mill for the slaughterhouse. Lumber mills can be demolished later on when there are no trees around your lumber mill anymore. In those kind of situations, you can see that yourself. The, look, the, the longer the game goes, the worse the lumber mills are gonna become because you're gonna eventually run out of resources around your lumber mill. And your workers, they need to walk all the way to the bottom side in order to collect resources for you. In those kind of situations, it could be a nice choice to demolish your lumber mill and go for the slaughterhouse instead. Still no troll cage, by the way, from the yellow model player Karuskas. He's just getting some catapults on the field. I mean, if you want to just make catapults and no trolls, you can also demolish your slaughterhouses and get some furnaces instead. Which would not be the best idea because if you demolish them, you will have only level 1 furnaces. And like now, all the slaughterhouses are level 3, so he has a great amount of resource income. Power points are rising. Fishy was able to collect Elvin Wood, Elvin Elias, uh, Drafts, Heal, and three power points afterwards. Glorious Charge has been used once again. He's going for a potential trample. Look at the trample damage. He's still one shotting everything, guys. He has to kill the catapults, though, because catapults they can mess up the combos from Karuska's big time. One of the katas has been taken down. The katas here are going to be taken down next. All the katas are done now, beside these two in the middle. Uh, it's still a bad fight to take, in my opinion. There are too many furnaces, towers shooting down at these combos. Elvin is on the field. You can also use one of your Nazgûls to kill the catapults, but they have some protection with the Gonda arches in the backside. They don't have the spot of the Drama Troll, though. Drama Troll has to be always around the arches to give them the spot they need. During all this time, the Gonda player was going inside the base from Rohan. He was able to kill the statue and the well. Okay, Lightning Sword is gonna be used on the Nazgûls. Gandalf is taking a lot of damage here, and the Nazgul is actually being trapped in those kind of situations. Heal is being used from Rohan to heal up the Nazgul once again. Gandalf will be able to get away. And the Nazgul here from 
Uh, Karuskas might be in trouble. Keep in mind that the Well of Rohan can actually heal up the Nazgûls, unlike the Well from Gondor, guys. The Well from Gondor can't heal trolls, Muma kills, or the Nazgûls, but the Rohan Well can do that. Like, if you are playing Mordor and Rohan, and your Nazgûl is very damaged, you can always send him to the Well and regenerate much, much faster. Okay, the Mordor player here has uh, almost 10 power points collected, 20 power points will be unlocking the Balrog summon, which would be enough to end the game right now. On the other side, the other Mordor player, Karuskas, has collected 8 power points, he's 12 power points away from a potential Balrog summon. Gondor player has collected, uh, let me check, 5 power points after the Alvin allies, he can go for the you know, Eagles next or Cloud Break. Um, you know, situationally, Eagles not gonna be the best choice in this matchup because there are just too many combos to deal with. The Eagles are gonna get one shotted. And I think Cloud Break, you know, might be a good choice because that's gonna slow down the enemy Rohirrim and you can chase them down. Gandalf, with his Gondor Knights, is gonna go for another base rush. With the help of the Witch King, yeah, these Gondor Knights are gonna hit like an absolute truck. But you should never underestimate the damage of these combos with the Stature in the back and Theodin for the spot as well. I mean, the middle camp is still under control from the purple murder player. And their biggest win condition right now from the Rohan murder team is to destroy the middle camp. If they are gonna be able to do that, there's no production buildings inside the space. Only one orc pit, guys. So if you lose this middle camp, the game is gonna be pretty much over. And I think in those kind of situations, to make it kind of more safe, you always want to go for some production buildings like for example the siege works but also roll cage in your main base. Because you can afford it. Look his money, he has actually like a lot of units in the queue that's why he's running out of resources. Normally you should never run out of resources guys in this matchup as the model player with furnaces in the middle and full base with slaughterhouses in your main base. And you will be able to afford at least two, three siege weapons to spam catapults and units on the field. And still no troll cage from Karuskas. He's actually going for the siege works, you know, number two. Aragorn is on the field, by the way, from Fishy for the support of this allied uh, mortal combos to give them leadership. Level 10 Rohirrim and level 8 Rohirrim on the field. Um, yeah, he has also some combos inside the base and one elven warrior at the top of the wall. Uh, also, his ally is putting some catapults inside the allied base for some protection. Elven allies will be used from the Gondor player this time. Lightning Sword is gonna miss, that's why he's cancelling it. And now it's gonna be a Kata War at this stage of the game. The Katas are not protected once again, they're gonna be just taken down in a second. Glorious Charge was used actually on the Rohirrim once again for a potential trample. I missed this one. There are a lot of trolls doing absolutely nothing from the Moto player's skin in the middle camp. He's just sending out his catapults uh, to kill the enemy catapults. <laughs> double Siege Warwicks against Double Siege Warwicks, one of them in the middle, one of them at the main base. But he was not getting any units from this one on the field just yet. Darkness is available, guys, uh, from the Moto players. Both of them have the Darkness available. Karuskas is now 11 power points away from getting his Balrog unlocked. Vichy needs half a power point for a potential end summon. You can also go for the Andruil sword for Aragorn to make him stronger. Gondor player is going for the Rohan base once again. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. He was letting Gandalf in and repairing the wall right after. Gandalf now has nowhere to go, guys. Nowhere to go. He's gonna use the water of power, but he can't make it out alive. What a nice move here from Fishy. Saying, okay Gandalf, you are inside my base, and now what? You can't get out anymore, I'm just gonna repair the wall and cancel it right after. Smart move here from Fishy, paying off big time. But next time Gandalf is gonna be on the field, he's gonna be level 10 guys, it's a huge power spike. However, reviving Gandalf now is gonna cost you a lot of money, 3000 resources for reviving a level 10 Gandalf. And a funny fact by the way, if you don't know, reviving Aragorn level 10 is more expensive than reviving Gandalf level 10, indeed. If you want to revive your Gandalf le uh, Aragorn level 10, you have to invest 3,500 resources. One more time, beautiful trample with the Rohirrim, level almost 10, guys. Eating like a truck, power points are rising, he can now go for the end allies if he wants to. And they wouldn't be that successful in this matchup, I think Cloudbreak is the way to go. Even though it's gonna delay your army of the dead, because the fastest way right now for the Rohan player to get to army of the dead would be to go for the ends. 
and collect 10 power points right after the trolls are dying quite fast as well. Baze is getting kinda ganked once again here from the Gondor player, he's gonna be able to deal significant amount of damage. I don't know why he was cancelling the uh, rebuild at the first place, he might lose the entire base here guys. Gohirim are coming back, there are some combos on top of the wall. Cloudbreak is going to be used from the Rohan player. The Gondor player was going for the Eagles, remember they do, could not do anything in this matchup. But the Gondor player was able to get a lot of power points collected. Cloudbreak is gonna be nice because it can slow down the enemy units. Only two farms remaining inside the base of Rohan. And I think he has not enough money. I think, you know what you can do with Rohan if you wanna get more money? You can always go for Eomir. Eomir is super underrated for the resource generation. Like once you get Eomir level 2 and unlock uh, the outlaw leadership, it's gonna give you money constantly when you kill enemy units. And what happens right now is the Rohan player is always using Glorious Charge, killing a bunch of units, but he is not getting rewarded for that, beside power points and experience. But with Eomir being around you, uh, first of all, you can get some level 4 in a second. Like, you go for a trample with your Rohirrim, you one-shot the backline with the combos, and you get some level 4, that's gonna unlock your leadership and your Rohirrim are gonna hit even harder, you know? That's the first thing. The second thing is um, that if you get some level 2, you will get a lot of money, and this is not to be underestimated, guys. Trust me on that one. The Rohan player is struggling money-wise, obviously. Uh, he has to invest all his money again to rebuild the base. He can't make any more units now. That's why it's so important to keep the units yes, alive on the field. Um, the Moro player is gonna reclaim now one of the one of the settlements around this side. The Gondor player is rebuilding his stable. The Gondor player will also gonna get his Gandalf back on the field very very soon. There is one Ranger. He's also repairing all parts of his wall, guys. Just why not? He was untouched for the majority of the time. The farms are still level three. Getting a lot of money, and also keep in mind that Gondor faction has always no more spots in his base. Two more two more spots than the Rohan faction. Just count three, six, seven spots in the Rohan base. Three, six, eight, nine spots in the Gondor base. Okay, so the Rohan player is also repairing the wall, but it might be too late for that. He was just losing quite a lot. Uh, the siege is gonna begin, so he might be forced to cancel this. If you cancel that, you're gonna get your money back. Repairing a wall part in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is gonna cost you 2000 resources. Game is big time back and forth. Skin is now 8 power points away from getting the Balrog unlocked. Balrog again will be able to win you the game. On the other side, Kraken has 6 power points. Uh, is 6 power points away from Army of the Dead. And Karuskas is 5 power points away from his own Balrog. While Fishy is still 8 power points away from his own Army of the Dead. So it's like a, like a slowed down game right now. I'm surprised that the Rohan Gondor, Rohan Mora team are still in the game. Because the middle is gonna give you a huge advantage. Trust me on that one. If Karuskas would be able to capture this middle, it would be much, much easier for the Rohan Mora team to win this one. There is one level gun, level 10 Rohirrim he has to be careful with. Uh, it's almost down. Gandalf is going for a beautiful vault of power. And in combination with the Alvin Woods to deny all the leadership to be able to one-shot these units. Lightning Sword was able to catch Theodin, and Theodin is gonna be able, barely able to get away. The level 10 Rohirrim has to be extremely careful, he has to rebuild the well, he was able to do that. Now he has only two level two, level 3 farms inside the base and two level 1 farms, so his resource income is not looking great. He has not a single farm outside of his base, guys. The Rohirrim for some reason are not, rec are not recovering over time. Um, the Nazgul from Karuskas are gonna be able to kill the Catapults. Gandalf is getting damaged while he was trying to easter light. You can dodge the easter light or delay the easter light if you are gonna dance around like this. You know, his abilities are scaling with level, that's why he was almost able to one-shot the Nazgul with level 10 easter light, even though he was full HP. Now the siege is gonna begin on once again the Rohan base. The wall is gonna be taken down. Okay, the Rohirrim were able to, you know, get revived. Elven allies will be used from the Rohan player Fishy as well. He might be putting them on top of the wall. The Mora player here, I'm actually curious why he is not going for the for the Drama Troll. Drama Troll is offering you such a big leadership. Aragorn might be in trouble. Fishy doesn't even have the Anduril sword. Without Anduril, Aragorn is very, very vulnerable and Aragorn is down just like that. I mean, Gandalf is level 10. After killing uh, Aragorn, he was also able to get a lot of power points. He's now only 3.5 power points away from his own army of the dead. Karuskas is 3 power points away from the Balrog summon. And Skin, the model player, the purple model player in the middle of the map, 
his seven power points away from his own Baldrog summon. You know, actually, I think Karuskas is going to be the first one who's going to get Baldrog unlocked. And he might go for the base from the Gondor player. And again, he will be able to one shot the entire base. And if you do that, the Gondor player is going to get just defeated. Okay, the siege is beginning now. The Rohan player has to go for the Glorious Charge play. Glorious Charge is available. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. There are not enough trolls to keep these Rohirrim alive. Darkness is being used from the model player Karuskas as well for the support on this Rohirrim. Cloudbreak is being used, by the way, this time from uh, Fishy once again to slow down the armor. I mean, to slow down the enemy units and also reduce their armor by 30%. That's something you don't see in the description, guys, unfortunately. But it is 30%. You are you know, reducing their armor and also slowing them down. That's why you will see that Cloudbreak being used in many, many times when you see Rohan against Rohan or Gonda against Gonda matches. I mean, Gonda against Gonda matches, you will see potentially more Eagle Summon. But Rohan against Rohan, you will see many, many times you know, Cloud Break in order to chase down the enemy Rohirrim and Rohirrim marches with your own Rohirrim and take them down. Okay, Rohan play is safe for now. Uh, and Karuskas was able to get a little bit amount of power points from this fight. He's now only two power points away from getting his own Balrog unlocked. There are a lot of catapults from from the purple model player. I mean, from the yellow model player, Karuska is doing absolutely nothing. They're gonna get one shotted. I like the way Gondor player is playing that one. He's actually going from one base to the other one, getting some power points left and right. Because at this stage of the game, it's much more important about who's gonna get Army of the Dead first, who's gonna get the Balrog first. If Karuskas is going to get Balrog first, the Gondor player is going to get defeated. Just like that, you know? And we're going to take a look into the power points from Karuskas. Now he's only two power points away. Gandalf has the Water of Power available, guys. Might use it now against Rohirrim potentially. It's going to be a nice counter to be used against Rohirrim once they want to charge in with the Glorious Charge. You want to be able to kill them. Because Glorious Charge is going to give you a lot of armor. 300% armor, by the way. Now 75% armor. 300% it was in Rise of the Witch King. Sorry, my bad. But yeah, with the Glorious Charge, they won't die. But you can still knock them back and protect your allies' combos, you know? Okay, the Katas are getting focused down. A lot of Katas, this time they have some protection with the trolls around them. A lot of Nazgul's flying around. <laughs> Fiesta fight is happening once again. I mean, they can't really approach right now, you know? When there are too many Katas on the field, you don't want to fight with your combos. Because your combos, regardless how much leadership they have, they're going to get one-shotted pretty much. All the time from the model catapults with the drama troll leadership. That's why those those catapults from the purple model play are stronger definitely than from Karuskas because they don't have leadership and these catapults they do with drama troll. They can have 50% more damage and 50% more armor. Okay. Um, and there we go. What a power once again. Beautiful. And I think he was able to get a lot of power points from this one. Yeah, he's only one power point away, guys, from getting his. Army of the Dead unlocked. But Karuskas has now his own Balrog summon. He's dancing around with the Nazgul, but the Nazgul is going to get taken down from Gandalf. Let me check the power points from the Gondor player. He's going to use Eye of Sauron to reveal this area in order to be to, ab to be able to use the Balrog summon. He's flying inside. Uh, Kraken is asking for assistance. Eagle summon is on cooldown. Beautiful breath fire. But he has now enough power points collected for the army of the dead. He might use it. He might be forced to use it defensively. And that's going to be also the case. Balrog can still fly around though. The Nazgûls are coming in clutch. Fly. Fly to the next level. Because now you can just keep flying until your breath fire is back up. You know, you don't need to risk the biscuit. Just keep flying all the time. You can still do it though. One of the Nazgûls is down. They are trying to support. Heal is coming in clutch from Fishy on the Balrog though. Very well done. Keep Balrog healthy. The army of the dead is getting taken down by Balrog's damage, area damage around him. The Tita is still remaining on the field. He has to use the fire whip for that one. That's going to be also the case. No, he's going to use the breath fire. He was also able to kill one of the Nazgûls. Can he still do it? No, he can't. Gandalf, the hero of the day, was able to kill him right before he was able to kill the Citadel, guys. That is so unfortunate. And Gondor play is safe for now. Holy quacamole. Karuskas lost also all his Nazgûls, unfortunately. He won't be able to kill this Citadel anymore. On the bright side, uh, you know, the only bright side about the story is that Kraken, the Gondor player, was forced to use the Army of the Dead defensively. That's the only bright side. 
And also, the bad thing is that Skin now has almost Bloodrock available as well. 3 power points on the away. We have Rohirrim summon now from the Gondor player. They are gonna all go inside the Rohan base now. Rohan player has nothing left. Eowyn is outside of the base for some reason. Lumber mills, uh, Lumber mill workers are saying, I'm not working today anymore. I have a free day. They are just staying in the base from Rohan for no reason. <laughs> Gandalf is popping off, guys. Level 10, we have seen multiple times what of power. And Rohan is all about to get defeated. And also, Fishy is still 4 power points away from his own army of, army of the dead. You know, like, that's a lot. Especially if you have no units left on the field. I think Theoden died as well. I can see Theoden on the field, guys. That's gonna be GG, I believe. Because after Rohan is down, the game is gonna be over. Uh, yeah, they're gonna just leave the game now. GG well played from the Gondor Moro team. I think if uh, Karuskas would be able to finish off the Gondor base, maybe he, they would be able to win the game because it would turn to a 2v1 situation, you know? But even then, it would be extremely hard because. I don't believe that they have en enough units to deal with the massive catapult troll combo spam from the opponent motor player. And the opponent motor player was all about to get his Balrog as well. So he could be just using it against Rohan and finish him off as well, you know? And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Please don't forget to leave a like on these videos. Likes are helping out a lot for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, please don't forget to leave a sub on this channel as well. I see you next time. Take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.